All right, we're back here on Is It Prophecy here on Israel National Radio, Root Sheva. The show is syndicated as Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. And you can also find me on JAP. JAP is a Jewish application which has Shirim from big rabbis and historians as well as episodes of this program. So go to www.j-app.me. Or you can download JAP from iTunes and Google Play stores. And, of course, you can email me personally at messiahhour at gmail.com. We're continuing the conversation with pro-Israel blogger Leslie Ann Stoffel. Now, Leslie, we know there's something very exciting coming up in the near future. Mike Huckabee, uh, the former governor and former presidential candidate, is apparently coming to Israel. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. He's actually there right now. With okay. um, a big with a big group, and uh, I I work for United with Israel. I do the donations. I handle the donations. Like when people want to donate to us, and I call them back, I talk to them, and get the donations stuff like that. And I also help out with our Twitter, getting people to interact on Twitter. Um, and I've been with them for almost three years now. But um, what's really exciting here? Oh my goodness, Mike Huckabee is our three millionth. Um, Facebook supporter, and he's going to be at a big celebration there in Jerusalem at the Imbal Hotel. Um, now, I don't know. I think that was the invitation only, but people can watch it live on the broadcast on Wednesday, February the 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 8 p.m. Israel Time. And they can go to our website at unitedwithisrael.org and find it there. Or they can go to three, www.3, the number three, or spell it out, millionstrong.com. And Mike Huckabee will be the special guest. Um, oh, we're really excited about that. It, it was so cute because actually BB was our one millionth supporter, and we had a, a cute message from him on Facebook. So. So those are kind of the fun things that are going on. That's pretty exciting. So what in particular is the reason for Mike Huckabee coming to Israel this time around? Well, I think he he's oh he, he's a really strong uh, Israel supporter, and I believe he tries to go. At, from what I heard, he likes to go at least once a year, and he can't, he brings a big delegation of people with him, and he shows them around, and they meet people, and he's done a lot of uh, – media stuff right now. Actually, I did a special page up on unitedwithisrael.org, or sorry, on uh, the realclearisrael.org. On my very front page, people can see it. I, I, it's got his latest article, his latest um, interview on Arut Sheva, and it's got our interview from our executive director, David Zeit, on Voice of Israel on there giving, uh, telling different things about what we do with United with Israel to support Israel and, uh, you know, make the case and, and all the charity things we do and, and the Mike Huckabee thing. So, so I did that, put that together for people just in case they want to see that. Okay, great. And Mike Huckabee, uh, for those who don't know, can you tell the audience a, a bit about him and some of his pros of work? Because I recall during the war, the Gaza War of the Summer, uh, he was one of the, the rare people on TV that was supporting Israel fully, you know, saying Israel had a right to defend itself yeah. and yeah. Israel was doing the right thing. Some politicians kind of were wishy-washy, John Kerry, for example. So tell us a little bit more about Mike Huckabee and why Israelis should really support him and, and get behind him because he's doing some great work. Yeah, well, when I say he's a, a strong Israel supporter, he's also one of these very clear thinkers. He sees the right and the wrong, and he sees that – Israel has every right to exist, and he he sticks up to that, and he speaks out about it. That's why I'm encouraging people to go to my webpage and read his latest article and look at his latest uh, Arut Sheva interview. That really tells you about him. He's such an amazing guy. Uh, maybe I can just pull it up here real quick and read a couple of things from it. Uh, but just, yeah, he, he's always – I think he's been coming to Israel for something like 30 or 40 years, like a really long time. He's been coming and, and being supportive. So he's a very – and I believe he's very sincere about it, and he's a, a really gentle and, and decent man. Um, let's see here. Uh, he says here in his article, when he ver first visited uh, in 1973 – 
Israel was a proud but struggling 25-year-old nation. Many of its people lived in kibbutzim out of necessity to support their economy. They largely grew oranges, vegetables, hosted tourists, and came to walk in the footsteps of the prophets. It's fair to say that Israel has not spent the last 40 years simply wandering around the desert. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, the modern things, the, the technology and all the things that have happened and the, the miracle of this little country that, that, you know, was only reborn a little over 60 years ago. So he, he knows the real ins and outs. He meets with military people and politicians and the everyday person. So he's an all round, uh, supporter who really knows what he's talking about and he also is supportive at this point because he realizes that Israel you know because he's American he's talking about America but he's saying America and Israel are fighting the same global Islamic jihad threat so he's standing up and saying hey you know this is the deal and he he's also said in here too he actually mentioned that Netanyahu is the Churchill in in a world of chamberlains you know neville chamberlain was the one who met with uh hitler in in munich and and basically the, the appeased was appeasing hitler and the and the second world war started so yeah so he mentions that in the article and i'd really encourage people to read it because it's got a lot of good info in there and tells you really a lot about him so yeah. now what's interesting also this uh mike huckabee he's the former governor of arkansas but as mm-hmm. i mentioned presidential candidates ran for president before the primaries and yeah. uh there's some i saw an article that there's an early state poll that shows he is in the lead right now as far as they took a general poll and he has 17 percent and he's the front runner so uh, talk about his chances about potentially being the next president of the united states and, and winning the 2016 election well ari i think it's too soon to say. Now, I, I myself would really like to see him win. I really would, because he's got the the maturity and the clear thinking and the experience and the world, uh, the world experience of being able to handle this job and with the threats and everything that that America is facing. Now, I'm in Canada, but we look to our neighbors in the south as uh as an ally and we look to a strong america to to be the sort of underpinnings of western civilization so for me it's really important and i'd love to see him win but i I don't know i really don't know if he will because see that the liberal press they tear these guys apart and and he could be torn apart by the time it comes so it's just so hard to say do you think a lot of americans i remember when he ran before i think some people looked at him as maybe too right wing, and one of those things yeah. that is uh, that kind of hurts him. He's he's pretty honest, and I think that uh, he might say things that aren't so politically yeah. uh, good for him. But he says what he thinks. Yeah, that could. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. It, it, it typically we've seen that people like this don't win. But then again, if you look at our Prime Minister Harper here in Canada. We've got a really left-wing press, and we've just lost our Sun News Network, which was our only uh, counter to that, and hopefully Ezra Levant's trying to start something else up. But what I'm saying is Stephen Harper speaks his mind. He's, a, he's just like Mike Huckabee. He's a strong, clear-thinking leader, and he thinks, and he actually won here in Canada uh, against all odds, really, because the liberal press actually absolutely hate him. So. You just never know. You just don't know. We we can hope for the best um, because, look, hey, Stephen Harper has gone a long way here, and he's the same kind of guy. Again, indeed, this is, is a prophecy here on Israel National Radio. Route 7, the show is syndicated as the Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. And, of course, you can email me at messiahhourgmail.com. We're continuing the conversation with Leslie Ann Stoffel. Now, Leslie, there's a very exciting story in the process that there's a Likud member of Israel, the Israeli Knesset, to, that's coming to speak, but uh, this Likud member is, is a little different than the typical Likud member. So tell us a, a bit about him. Oh, yeah. This is a member of Knesset, Ayub Kara, and he's a Druze. He li- he's a Druze um, patriot, Israeli in Israel, of course. Uh, I met him 
Oh, let's see. Back in 2011, when his chief of staff friended me on Facebook, they invited me to the Knesset, and I met them, Mendy Safadi and Ayu Kara. And actually, when I met him, I realized, oh, my goodness, Ayu Kara had been to my town here, close to Vancouver, with our native community. They invited a delegation of Israelis to their longhouse here and had a big party and a big celebration and it was really amazing. And I recognized that Ayub had been to that. So now that Ayub, I, I, he's back in the Knesset, he will be back in the Knesset, I'm pretty sure. He wrote to me, uh, I wrote to congratulate him. He wrote me back and he said he'd love to come back to Vancouver. So I got together with some other people. Um, I went to see, uh, Mordecai Kadar speak at the synagogue a couple of weeks ago. And somebody, one of the young guys, he's Israeli, but he works for the Jewish agency here. And he said he'd help me, help us bring um, Ayub Kara to speak. And what we'd like to do is maybe have another sort of indigenous uh, uh, kind of themed speaking engagement for him to come to. So, yes, yeah, so we're, we're wanting to do that. And, and he's really excited about coming. And we're, we're really excited to bring him. Now, uh, that's uh, it's a it's a pretty interesting story. So, do you know how this gentleman got into politics, and in particular, his decision to be a member of Knesset? Oh well, now that's interesting, uh, Ari, because when I met uh, Ayub and Mendy, they introduced me to their friend um, Ata, who lived, uh, and their other friends who lived in, uh, in their town there in northern Israel. Now, gosh, I, I hope I don't get the name of. Damietta, I think it's called, and they gave me, me and some of my friends a tour of their town, and they have, they have, um, they are so patriotic, and they're in the, they're, they are in the army, they lose people just like everybody else, they lose their young guys in the army and everything else, and they have a museum with all the people that have been in the army, and who have lost their lives, and what they've done, and He's he loves Israel so much, and he's so popular within his community and you know outside of his community, and that's why he was able to be in the Knesset because he's so patriotic and he loves Israel a lot, and he's just a wonderful spokesperson for them, for you guys. Yeah, and what do you think about um, his influence going forward? Where do you see his role? in Israeli society and Israeli politics because everyone out there says Israel, or not everyone, but a lot, you know, 90% of the media says Israel yeah. is prejudiced and Israel does not like uh, let non-Jews do things, etc. Here you have a Druze that's a member of, yeah. of Knesset. So, so talk a bit about that aspect. Yeah, well, he that's what he and all his, his friends try to do, get that message out. They, have, uh, they do have a Druze Zionist organization, actually. And um, they try really hard to get that message out that, hey, Druze are, are just as much a part of Israel as everybody else is. They're included. And he, that's really part of the reason why he wants to come here and talk to an audience here to tell, tell people, look, this is, you know, this, I'm the face of Israel too. So yeah, that's, that's a big part of his role. He, he loves doing that. Again, this is Is a Prophecy here on Israel National Radio, Ruth Sheva, and the show is syndicated as the Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. And, of course, you can find me on JAP. JAP is a Jewish application which has Shireen for big rabbis as well as lectures from historians and episodes of this program. So go to www.j-app.me. And the last question I uh, wanted to, to ask you about, about this great story is um, you were talking about an Israeli, entire Israeli delegation that came to Canada. Yeah. And it, it t can you tell us a bit about how often that happens and some of the goals of that delegation? Well, the, now what the goals were of that particular delegation were, it was to strengthen the communities of the indigenous people of Israel, who are the Jews, and, and the Druze too, of course, to identify with the indigenous people here who are uh, our First Nations people. So that's what that was about. It was amazing, Ari. Oh, my goodness. They have this huge longhouse here, and they had, I think they had, I can't remember now because it was about four or five years ago now, but I think there were about four to six Israeli 
members of Knesset here. And they had the, the native dancing, the dinner, and uh, we had some people from our, uh, our federal government. We had Stock, uh, Stockwell, Stockwell Day, who's a really pro-Israel guy as well, and a couple other people. But that particular one was, was you know, identifying with the indigenous uh, people. And I think that's what we'd like to do again. Uh, I spoke with uh, Sarah B. She's from uh, Calgary United with Israel. I met her. I saw her at the, uh, the Mordecai Kadar um, speaking engagement. And she wants to get Ryan Belrose. Uh, who also writes for Israeli Cool, she wants to get him together with Ayub, and because of, Ryan's uh, an indigenous person from Canada, so we'd like to, I think, do that again, and just sort of promote the indigenous uh, side of the story of Israel, which isn't talked about very much, you know, that this is a tribe of people that were booted out of their land, and now they're back. You know, just to keep it simple. So I think that's kind of where we wanted to go with this again. All right. Now, it is a story that I saw on your Facebook. There was a State Department spokeswoman that says one of the reasons for the terror of ISIS is that they need jobs. Was was that a joke or was she being serious? <laughs> oh, Ari, don't even get me started on this. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. She's getting a pop on, on, on social networking because uh, this this was a jaw-dropping, insane uh, statement from, from this, this woman, from the State Department, if you can believe it. She got on NBC and said to uh, Chris Matthews that um, we can't win this by killing ISIS, okay? These bloodthirsty, genocidal killers, uh, we need to build up their economies, and give them jobs. I just about fell off my chair. I, I couldn't believe. Because the first thing that popped in my mind was, well, then, gee, Winston Churchill was a real moron. He actually went to war to destroy the Nazis, and all he had to do was give them jobs? Like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I just don't think uh, they really figured that out. I mean, it, we've had other guests on that are talking with Ted Bellman, David Medina, et cetera, that the State Department of the United States just does not seem so friendly towards Israel. Has that been your understanding as well? Oh, oh yes, Ari. Most definitely. I, I was disgusted in the summer when that war was going on, when, when Hamas was sending rockets over into Israel. And there was the coming out of their mouth was the moral relativism, was the uh, Israel needs to, uh, you know, stop defending themselves kind of thing, you know, it, it, it needs to be proportional. All these things, <clears throat> it just goes on and on and on. So, yeah, because the State Department is, has been known, uh, is not known to be, they're, they're very, very pro Arab actually. And um, the kind of insanity that is coming out of there now, though, is just beyond the pale, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the idea that all they have to do is ISIS jobs. I mean, that's just not an understanding that ISIS is a terrorist organization that does not like uh, non-radical Muslims. Correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and somebody said on Fox News this morning, I heard them say, they said, look, this is even gone. I think it was the reporter that reports to Fox News from the White House who said, you know, it's gone beyond a terror group. They are actually a genocidal bunch of murderers. You know what I mean? This is this is way way past. We're in an emergency situation now, really, because this is so serious. And to have somebody stand up there and say that, I I don't know. I, I don't even know how they can even have their job anymore after that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, if someone made that big of a mistake in a typical regular job, they would probably be fired on the spot. So the fact this uh, yeah. woman for the State Department still has her job is really, really mind-boggling. Um, last yeah. few minutes we have left with you, if you could, uh, again, tell everyone about the work you're doing, United Israel, and, and your personal blog and other social media things uh, that you do, because we want our audience to go over there and, and follow you as well. So tell, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I like to I like to talk about it because it it, it gives people I, I'm just a regular grassroots person. 
I think I am probably a little different than the average person because I am a news junkie. But it just goes to show that 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 an average person can make a difference. I started out just on my just on a Facebook page. That was it. And now I've got 27,000 followers on Facebook and Twitter, both my pages. And I write for all these different places now. And I just want to get the truth out as I see it. And I do do a lot of research and reading and try to get the truth out for people who want to know it. And my my website where everybody can find most can find everything is at therealclearisrael.org. Oh, and for United with Israel, I do the donations and the social media with Twitter. I also post a lot of stuff about from from our website onto my Facebook everything because we have staff writers who write about everything that's going on in the world and how it relates to Israel and everything. So there's always great stories on unitedwithisrael.org. And then, of course, make sure to watch for the party Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Uh, Israel Time, tomorrow uh, on Wednesday, the 18th. And you can find it at uh, 3 – oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of it now. It's on our webpage, webpage at unitedwithisrael.org, but we have another special page in case it's 3millionstrong.com. There we go, 3millionstrong.com. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, great. Well, Leslie, we certainly appreciate your time and breaking down uh, the president's uh, not-so-warm welcome to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his speech to Congress, as well as members of uh, – in Israel, the Israeli Knesset, we discussed that as well. And, of, of course, uh, your particular work uh, has been really, really great for all country Israel, so we really appreciate it. Everyone check out Leslie's work. Again, this is Is a Prophecy here on Israel National Radio. The email is messiahourgmail.com. Leslie, thanks so much for being on the show today. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Ari. I just had a great time, and I'm so happy to do it. Indeed, and uh, also a quick shout-out from Pesach Kirshner. He says hi, so I wanted to send that hi to you as well. Oh, hi, Pesach. <laughs> All, right, thank- <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a great day, and uh, podcast of this program will be available on YouTube uh, shortly, so keep an eye on that. Again, this is Is a Prophecy here on IsraelNationalRadio.com.